they say they swarm when the cells are capped. Well, we have capped queen cells here, but the population on this hive doesn't indicate that they swarmed. This is our most recent swarm hive. We're gonna take a quick peek at him, her, it, whatever. And we're gonna hope that number nine minds its own business. And there's what happens if you leave the feed on too long. We can see that they've built some really wonderful comb up here. It's beautiful burr comb though. Isn't that beautiful? Like a small kitten, a small puppy, or a baby, new swarms are always just so cute. They really got that on there. So if you end up with something stuck like this, the best way to do it is to twist it. I'm sure they don't appreciate that, but it is what it is. Look at that, though. Isn't that cute? Put in. It's a nice draw. Okay. So this was not our initial brood comb. Milk brood. Brood. Okay, we have a laying queen in this hive. That's what we needed to know. This is our other swarm. Just gonna take a very fast peek in here. So this is one of our experimental pre-wax jobs. On some of the newer foundation, I had put an extra layer of wax on it to see if that would take care of the crazy comb. That's a far more even draw. I'm happy. I'm gonna mix these two frames up. I'm gonna put these girls back down. Swarm number two, or actually the first one that we caught, seems to be doing well. This is our number one hive. Found a ton of queen cups in it last time. We're gonna see if that urge is still with them. Or whether they've gotten down to business now that the honey flow started. This hive had crashed in population in April and was slowly building itself back up, but you know, nowhere near as what you would normally expect. This top is a honey super on the other side of the excluder. I don't expect that much has happened here. I'm judging by the weight, no, nobody's done anything up here yet. Last week I went in and was surprised to find several queen cups in the swarm position. Actually, I'm just going to flip this up and see if we have queen cups. None of them were charged, so I removed them. Definitely a fur comb. Oh my lord, this is heavy. The rule of thumb is that when the first queen cell is capped, the swarm takes place. But bees love to break rules. So let's see. Again, we have queen cups. That might have been a queen. Yeah, okay. So these girls were thinking about it. Along with the charged queen cups were about seven capped queen cells. Yet the population was storming. Um, I don't know whether I want to destroy all these cells. They say they swarm when the cells are capped. Well, we have capped queen cells here. But the population on this hive doesn't indicate that they swarm. As I said before, bees love to break the rule of thumb, and I've seen some weird things in my years. I'm not going to destroy all these cells, um, because we have a couple that are uh, queenless. So let's see, we have one, two, three. I've seen swarms wait to issue until the queen hatches, 
I've even run into hives where there's more than one queen running around, although that situation usually doesn't last too long. That is one hell of a lot of cells. These guys definitely have swarming in the line. But I don't think they've swarmed yet because I'm just seeing too many bees in here. This, this hive had a population problem and... Um, so yeah, this hive actually was at peak population right now. What I was seeing was not super seed cells. I could understand if I saw super seed cells. But, you know, when they're at the bottom of the frame like that, they are swarm cells. These bees want to get going. I had found eggs and young larvae, so there was a queen present. Ah, I never figure these guys out. Fourth frame over. Four, five, sixth frame over. And I'm just going to move those frames over to hives that we know had queen issues and see what they do with them. We're going to move this over to frame number four. I want to make damn sure we didn't move the queen in the process. It's really not a good idea to shake a frame that has queen cells on it if you want the queens to survive. Uh, I've done it before. I've tried lightly shaking them, but I didn't want to do that this time. I wanted to, to take valid queen cells over to the two hives that I knew had queen problems. Well, actually, there's a third hive, but <laughs> that's another story. But obviously, I did not want to take the queen over, so I tried it as hard as I could to inspect the frames, and I'm not the best one at finding queens, necessarily. The, our own bee does that very well, but she wasn't around. Yeah. So I did what I could to look at the frames to make sure we didn't have a queen, and moved them. Just going to replace these guys with undrawn frames out of the Honey Super. And... Uh, That way I can start buttoning this hive back up. Again, we're going to take a very careful scan of these frames that we're moving. Well, I am hoping that I don't find in the comment section, gee, you missed the queen. Look at time frame such and such. Uh, she's right there in the right-hand corner. I've seen that happen before, and uh, if it does happen, it isn't the end of the world. Uh, we can always get a new queen going in this hive, but... Uh, I, I figured, you know, that someone might find her and leave it down in the comments section. So if you spot her, tell me. A couple of big fat drones. Although I did find eggs and young larvae, it's not impossible that this colony is queenless. <laughs> although they were incredibly docile and quiet. I mean, there is the beginning of a honey flow going on. But really, these guys just kept about their, their business. Didn't buzz around disorganized or do any of the other clues. Now, now, sometimes when a swarm issues, the, the remaining bees, as long as there's queen cells in the hive, will be fairly calm. But you can almost get the feel when you open a hive, whether there's a queen in there or whether these bees are nervous about finding a new queen or raising a new queen. And as I said, I really don't think these guys swarmed. So we're going to go over to hive number four. Hive number four and hive number five both may very well have virgin queens in them. Uh, they certainly acted that way, but I wasn't sure and there was no brood pattern. Introducing queen cells when you don't have brood, you're not going to initiate a swarm. So this just gives them a backup plan. I mean, if I open this up and I see brood in there, then there's no reason to go any further. One small issue was due to the odd shape of the uh, queen cells i need to make sure we have enough space sure honey i opted to pull the honey super and exclude her off and then put this frame in the honey super and the reason for that is i don't want to damage these queen cells and they're extending down so far for those queen cells to fit because they're so oddly positioned. Since we are now in late May, I didn't have to worry too much about the temperature. There would be heat coming up from the brood box below, so I wasn't too worried about the queen cells getting chilled. I was worried about, worried about them getting damaged because of the odd shape. Right there. So I'm not being harmed by anything. 
if there's a queen in here, then they'll, they'll just ignore it. Or they'll tear it down or the queen will kill it. If there isn't, well, then they'll hatch her. Just for storage sake, I'm just putting this guy up here. No other reason. I'll we'll button this guy up. And we're going to do the same thing here. If there's a mated queen, she'll simply kill the cells off. If there isn't, if they're queenless, then they have an up and coming queen once that set hatches. Either one of these hives is noisy. Make sure there's enough clearance that we don't damage the queen cell. This hive did not have as much of a clearance problem as the other hive, so I was able to get it in there. I did not want to dig into these hives too deeply. When you have a virgin queen, if you have a virgin queen, you want to let her be for a while. You don't want to really disturb the hive too much. So I wanted to get in and get out as fast as possible. So down on the ground here, we have some bees that were dropped. I'm taking a little piece of this comb, and I'm going to place it there. And the theory is that if they're nurse bees, they don't know their way back to the hive. So hopefully they'll climb on that little piece of comb and I can give it back to the hive. So again, we ask you, hit that like and that subscribe button. It really does help. I don't know, if, I think they did away with the bell, <laughs> but hit the like and subscribe. It helps move the video out to other people. We don't make any money off of these videos, but uh, we certainly, uh, enjoy the opportunity of bringing this content and uh the more people that that are, are watching the more we're encouraged to try things out and and bring you content so do that for me and uh until next week from buzz park goodbye